What's up YouTube friends? Now Easter's next weekend, so today I'm going to show you how to make this quick and easy quilt as you go table runner. I put a nice print on the back so it could just be flipped over and used for spring. I'll show you how quick it is next. So the things you're going to need to make this quilt as you go table runner are 18 two and a half inch strips that measure 14 inches long. I have this jelly roll that I got a long time ago, probably at least six years ago. And if I had to guess, I think I got it at Joanne Fabrics. Now normally I probably would do 18 different prints, but since I had this jelly roll and it's Easter and I want to use it up, I'm going to have some duplicated prints, but that's just fine. You're also going to need to cut 18 squares that measure two and a half inches. I'll be using white, but you just want something that contrasts with your strips. You're also going to need some backing fabric that measures 16 inches by 37 inches. Now Mother picked out this print quite a while ago and I haven't got to use it, but I think it will look just great with the colors of these strips. And you're also going to need a piece of batting that measures 16 inches by 37 inches, just like our backing piece. And today I'll be using the 80-20 Poly Blend. You also need your sewing machine with matching thread. Today I'll be using black and your iron ironing board. So let's get started. And one more thing I forgot, you're going to need some binding. I'm just going to use the scrap pieces from my strip that's left over, sew them together and have a scrappy binding. So now let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut up my rectangles. So I have a couple of my strips stacked here. I'm going to cut off my salvage. And I'm going to measure down six inches. Cut that off. And then measure down eight inches. And you want to do that to all 18 of your strips. All right, so I have 18 eight inch strips. 18 6 inch strips and 18 2 and a half inch squares. So now you just want to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to start with my 8 inch strips first. I'm going to take a square, line it up, and sew with a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm just going to go ahead and chain piece all 18 pieces. Alright guys, so today I'll be using a straight stitch and my length is a 2.5. Like I said, I'll be using a quarter inch seam allowance and you really don't have to backstitch at this time. I'm just going to continue to do that until all my strips are done. So now that I have all my squares sewed onto my strips, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press this over on the white side. So once I get all these strips pressed, I'm going to take my stack of 6 inch pieces and over at the sewing machine, I'm going to lay this over the white square and with that same quarter inch seam allowance, sew these all together. I'll bring you back when I got these all sewed up. Alright guys, so here's one of my strips of the 18 all finished. I have all 18 finished and they're laid out on my table over there. And like I said, I press the 8 inch strip to the white square and the white square to the six inch strip. That way when we go to assemble it, our seams will nestle up nice. So next I'm just gonna take my backing piece and I'm gonna lay it face down. Then take your batting and lay it on top. And you wanna make sure that this is nice and smooth. So I like to hit it from the front Turn it back around and make sure there's no creases or wrinkles. 
So now we just want to find the center of our table runner. And since this is 37 inches wide, that's going to be 18 and a half. So I'm just going to line up my ruler. And with my friction pin, make a line. I don't know how well you can see that on camera because it's pretty faint, but I can see it. So now I also want to find my halfway mark going this way. So since this was 16 inches, I'm going to make a mark at 8. Alright guys, so like I said, I went ahead and laid mine out on the other table over here. And I took a picture with my tablet. So I'm going to go and I'm going to find the middle two pieces. So it just happens to be these ones. So on this first one, I want the 8 inch side on the top and the 6 inch side on the bottom. So I'm going to line up this top part of the white square with my middle line here. And then this first strip along the side of the raw edge. Now on my next piece, I want the 6 inch one at the top and the 8 inch one at the bottom. So I'm going to line up the seam of the white square with the center, but this time on the top. And I'm just going to fold it over. And because of the way we iron these, the seams should nestle together nicely. And throw some pins in. And because some of my strips are pretty wonky, I'm going to go ahead and pin them at the top and the bottom also. Making sure everything's lined up with our center marks. So now I'm just going to take this over to my sewing machine. And with a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm going to sew right down this seam. You do not have to backstitch at the beginning or the end. See you at the sewing machine. Alright guys, so I'm still using my straight stitch, but I'm going to bump up my length to a 3. I do have my walking foot on here. It does help with all these layers. And then I just went ahead and rolled up the extra fabric under my throat here of my machine. So with that quarter inch seam allowance, sew the seam. No. So now that I have these strips sewed on, I'm going to take my iron, I'm going to set the seam, and then iron my second strip over. So now just grab your third strip, and we're going to continue to do that until this side's all filled up. When that side's finished, we're going to go ahead and then start on this side and do the same thing. Now we are going to trim this down at the end so it doesn't really matter if the tops and bottoms line up. The most important thing is that these white squares stay in the middle. So I'm just going to flip this one over, nestle my seams, and stick some pins. Now I'm just going to take this back over to the sewing machine and finish up the top. I'll bring it back when it's finished. All right guys, so I have all my strips on and it's starting to look great. The next thing we're gonna do is trim this up. I want my finish size to be around 15 by 36. That's just to fit on our little table. So the first thing I'm gonna do is squirt up one of these sides. So what I'm gonna do is just line up a line on my ruler with this seam. It's pretty straight. And I'm just going to move it over until there's just a little bit left here to cut off. So with your rotary cutter, hack it off. Now I'm just going to rotate it and do the other side. Now this side wasn't so straight. I don't know if you can tell, but there's this curve here in my fabric. So I'm going to have to take a little bit more off this end. So I'm going to do the same thing and line up a line. 
and just cut it off. So now I'm just going to trim up the top and the bottom. So I lined up my ruler on the edge here that I just cut. I pulled it down making sure that there wasn't going to be little any bits of batting that I was going to miss. And then just make sure your lines are kind of lined up with your seams. This looks pretty good. So just cut it off. Now I'm going to flip it around and do the bottom. So now the final step is, is to bind it. I was going to do a scrappy border, but now I've decided that I just want to go with the old tried and true, my favorite, the black binding. I just think it's really going to make all these colors pop. And also with the back, it's going to make the back look just as pretty. So what I did was take three strips that are two and a half inches long by the width on the bolt of black fabric. Now just for an example, the way I attached them was I had one faced up. I took the other one face down and then I just sewed corner to corner. After you do that you just clip off your little dog ears and press it open. So here's what one of my seams looks like. Then I just went ahead and folded it in half and I have my binding. So I always like to start my bindings on the back. I'm going to match up my raw edge with the raw edge of my table topper. And I'm going to leave a tail here of about 5 to 6 inches and stick a pin. And with a quarter inch seam allowance I'm going to start at this pin and back stitch. And I'm going to sew all the way down until I get to my corner. When I get a quarter inch away from my corner, I'm going to stop with my needle down, raise my presser foot, and I'm going to just sew directly off of my project. Alright guys, so it should look like this, and I'm just going to mark it with my white chalk here, just so it shows up on camera. But I was sewing straight down here. Not such a straight line. I stopped, turned, and went right off the corner. So now I'm just going to fold this back so that my raw edges line up and then fold it up. So you should have a little flap here. So now I'm just going to take this back over to my sewing machine and continue to sew all the way around and I'll show you what to do at the end. Alright guys, so one thing I forgot to mention is from our first pin, I'm going to measure down about 8 inches. Stick another pin, maybe 9. And I'm going to sew right up to this pin and stop. And then I'll bring you right back to finish this off. Alright, so this is where I started. And here's where I ended. So now I'm just going to overlap this first piece by 2.5 inches and cut it off. So I'm just going to line up the beginning part on my grid. Go over two and a half inches and clip it off. So now you just want to open this up with the peak side going up. And I'm going to open this one up. You might have to fold it over a little with the peak going down. So all I'm going to do is measure up the end here with the side and the end on the other piece with the side and throw a pin. So now all I'm going to do is sew corner to corner. So from this bottom corner all the way to this corner. That's not a straight line, but you want a straight line. And now just leaving a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm going to snip off this little dog ear. And when you open up your binding, you have the perfect amount to finish it off. 
So now all you want to do is take this back over to your sewing machine, backstitch here at the beginning, sew this little piece down, backstitching at the end. Next, I'm just going to flip my binding around to the front. And at this point, I like to take this over to the ironing board and just press my binding, making sure it's nice and flat. So now I'm just going to fold over my binding to the front, and I'm going to go just past our seam line. Just like that. And using a zigzag stitch, I'm going to zigzag all the way around, making sure I backstitch at the beginning and the end. And so what I do is I just zag right off the fabric and zig onto my binding all the way around. When you get to a corner, you're going to fold it straight off, making this little triangle. Take your next piece, fold it over, and then you turn the corner and sew. And I'll show you that at the sewing machine. All right guys, so I'm over here at the sewing machine. I switched it to a zigzag stitch. My length's a three and my width is a four. So I'm gonna back stitch here in the beginning. And just keep sewing. All right guys, so coming up here to the corner, I'm just gonna fold up the bottom and lay it flat so it makes a little triangle and then fold over this little flap. Just like that. And then just sew. So now I'm going to stop with my needle down, raise my presser foot, and spin. And I'm going to continue to sew on my binding. Make sure you backstitch at the end. All right, guys, so here's the finished table runner, and I think it looks great. It brings a nice pop of spring color to the table. And here's what the back looks like. Now, after Easter, if Mother wants to, she can just go ahead and flip this over, and I think this will be great for spring up until summer. Now with this table runner, I'm going to have to give Mother some strict instructions. On my last one I made her, the Valentine's one, she ended up spilling coffee on it and didn't tell me for two days. Then she tried to hide it by just flipping it over. Guess what, Mother? I saw the brown spot. Now this is how we usually have our table runners. I made these whitewashed wooden candle holders a couple years ago, and I think these seashells really match with this color theme. If you like this video and want to see more of my videos, go down below and hit the big red subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up. If you'd like to be notified as to when I post a video, hit that bell notification button. If you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, or would like to leave a suggestion for a future upcoming video, leave me a comment. Head on over to Facebook, Patreon, and Twitter at Scrappy's Patch if you'd like to friend me there. Feel free to share this video across your social medias. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a happy Easter. And I'll see you next time.